For folks just joining us, Masayati, how are you doing? Uh. Okay, so before we get started, does anybody have any questions, thoughts, things they'd like to share based on any studying you did over the past 24 hours since we've seen each other, anything that you've come across that you'd like to to check in about before we sort of go into what we've got planned for today. Uh, I have something that I would like to share it was from last night that I wanted to um, interject, but just never had a chance to being an educator You'll hear a lot of teachers um, say, if you hear me clap three times, you know, and they clap three times. And if you hear me wave your hand, you know, well, and sling it, well, um, a teacher will say the same thing, but it will still be in English. And they'll say, if you hear me touch your floor. So I was trying to figure out um, to, uh, to say it in sling it. And so I'm going to do my best and, um, I'm willing to learn from you um, pros out there. So this is what I think um, of how you would say what I just said. Um, das guk i flu. Yes, no, am I missing a few words? <laughs> You're missing a verb. Chai <laughs> Ye flut sh. Khat ye ahi. Ye jin kaisla talk. Khat ye ahi. Ye gukt sh. That's what we're using in Sitka. There's also. So how would you? So how would you? Uh, I'm sorry. How would you spell that? Could you share that in the chat, please? I'll, I'll type it in the chat. Awesome! Awesome! Good enough, cheese. Yeah, there's also, um, what is it, Simon Says, um, that is up, I think, on YouTube, the instructions are on YouTube, um, and there's also, I think, a, like, a sheet that you can follow um, if you're interested in teaching, playing Simon Says with your Tlingit students, for those teachers up there, there are those resources. Yeah. Uh, Simon says is in this book. Oh, okay. Get. It's um, page 122, 123, where 
it goes through it, touch your knee, touch your whatever. So all that language is uh, written out in there already. Eh? Uh, There's also um, head, shoulders, knees, and toes in Tlingit that the kids really like. Um, Hitliish in particular does like the speed challenge, like how fast can you sing it in Tlingit? So that's pretty fun for folks who are teaching younger kids, but also um, we do it at the college level too, because it's a good way of sort of memorizing. Um, and it's just fun to, to connect again that some of those total physical response memory, making those memory pathways in your brain. <laughs> Anybody else have any questions, thoughts that they maybe had from last class or the past couple of classes that they'd like to check in about now? I just thought it was interesting looking at the juice for moose, it was the same as uh, owl with ear tufts. So it's referencing things on their mm -hmm. ears versus because antlers with shut aga. So that was not a uh, reference to its antlers. It was something on its ears. So I thought that was cool. Yeah, uh, disc, uh, disc and tisk, very similar. And then depending on where you're, you're from, you might pronounce one one way and the other the other way. Um, yeah. Some, some sound practice, if you're trying to get the z and the z down, you can go back and forth between those two nouns. Be good mouth practice for folks. Good yak. Yadu, uh, can you say, um, um, uh, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, nah, uh, think it and a moose. Uh, yeah, yeah, nah, disc, 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 can change. Yeah, cut your car, disc, yeah, well, hussy, hussy, cool, uh, this. Okay. Anybody else? We good for now? Okay. So today I thought we would start with listening to a story. So this particular story doesn't have subtitles on it. So folks that are just learning, um, I encourage you just to listen, see if you can hear some of those uh, particular sounds, see if you can start picking out some words for the folks that have been studying for a while. I'll ask sort of after we've listened together um, for folks to talk about what they heard, talk about what they found interesting, um, people who have been studying a little bit, any words you recognize um, from studying. So we'll listen to a story, check in about the story, and then we'll do some breakout group stuff, um, talking about some pronouns at, at different levels of complexity. So go ahead and get that started right now. Ya kana jok ya kana jok aya oh okay idata ya khtwasku esa kha akhi khona khawe kha khwasa ya keya ya stakate ye chnei idata ya hasil ko has yu khatangi idata ya hada chanki ya nisa we e yu khatangi just think it khena aya apa away Stuka hatati kunakaya. 
So he took them and gulped them right away. Yes. <laughs> Joy eighteen uh, grocery grocery adunia stakat ataskana sich chat haka our newt well a socket a tie koa our takone over good our eight to the shot. A conakayuya tie go a con. Can cut the do this a cozy do. Ya, ah, ya, ah, ya, ah, canak in o shoe as. A canak at the he wanted to go across. So I did to what he would be. I did not go good to do a say here. I would see cook on now. What Now, what are you at the way to say? He's calling them 
Okay, so I'm going to put the link in the chat for folks who'd like to go back and watch it later. It'll also be on the blog. So if you don't copy and paste it, that's totally fine. So that was Kahne uh, Nora Mark Dauenhauer that Kahne talked about uh, along with her husband, Richard Dauenhauer, who, who's done a lot of work in Thinget for folks who don't know, um, don't recognize her. Yeah, so I would like for folks who've been studying a long time and or teachers to wait a minute uh, before talking about the story, talking about what you heard in the story and give our uh, more 
our newer <laughs> language learners an opportunity to share if you heard any words you recognize, any phrases you recognize. And if you're just at the level where you're just recognizing sounds, that's totally fine. No judgment there at all. But what about our, I guess, intermediate learners or however you want to identify yourself? Anything that you've recognized from past couple of years of learning? Anything you recognize that we've been talking about these past couple of days? Go ahead and stop talking for a minute, let you folks share. And then um, if our, our grizzled folks would share after them, that would be kunachyake. Well, the title is Raven and Deer. That part I got. <laughs> okay. Lots of yesh and gokan stuff in there. A word I picked up a couple of times was naku, and I saw, or na, sorry. And I saw that with med medicine. Um, so that's all I got. <laughs> Yak A starts with one word for sure. Yeah, uh, Yanagut. Is that like walking around or something? So apparently Raven does walk around a lot. So <laughs> picked up on that one. It's a habit of his, I think. <laughs> I got distracted at the very beginning because I heard Aquagut Weyer Nietzsche Kiden Shakadnigi Gune Kajuk. So I, I heard the Nietzsche and the Wagut, and I recognized that phrase for starting a story. Ayahuay, particularly Yesh stories. He's walking around the niche. Goakan Uagut. Is that the deer arrived? Uagut. What do our more advanced learners say? Uwakut, Gokan Uwakut. It's a perfective went. Okay, Kachish. Yeah, so that gu, that gut verb is to go. And then what's in front of it will tell you whether or not they're doing it right now or if they've already done it. So yes, uwakan uwakut. Khatsu, when she realizes she's switched back into plate kayu khatangi. Okay, what about our advanced people who've been learning for a while or some of our Tlingit teachers like to give us a rundown of what she talked about in Tlingit? Was she saying that uh, he was dripping uh fat from his nose that his his snot was like fat his uh and yeah, no. always likes fat i guess or to eat it's fat fat nose drippings nose okay. drippings uh, for sure yeah. uh and i guess the line i was waiting for through the whole story was uh, Dutuk Adach Awe Ausicha. 
Um, so he's, um, how would you say that? Uh, he, he ate it, uh, well, you say it, Adlika uh, Kenach <laughs> Ida. He started at his butt. Let all of it. He ate them all up. Anything else? Any standout phrases, verbs? Towards the end of it, a kanach was said every other sentence, a kanach. Yeah, so some of that classic Klingit repetition to really emphasize that particular part of the story also makes for really good learning material, hearing that over and over again. Okay, so this is one version of Yesh Kakokan. You might have heard other versions. There's other ways of writing it, talking about it, um, but wanted to share this as the start of class with you folks, sort of listening to Klingant, training our ears to hear some of these things. Um, yeah. Okay. So, Today, based on some of the stuff we've been doing earlier, um, some of the discussions we've had, I think I would like to start with um, some as a group pronoun review. So we'll talk about pronouns, talk about what they look like, and then we'll sort of break up into different sections based on how comfortable we are with pronouns and with looking at uh, written Tlingit, um, and then we'll also have our absolute beginner group that will go through the resources. We'll look at the resources, where to find them, how to use them, um, and then look at some pronoun things as well. Yep. Okay. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay, so for my students last year, this should look pretty familiar, but hopefully review is good. Uh, for folks who've been studying, this might be a big review. Um, no worries either way. So we're going to talk about some pronoun things. Rene has touched on pronouns a little bit. Um, in Tlingit, the way to think about them is that there's a couple of different types. So in English, we think about them as he, she, her, them, they. Um, in Tlingit, we have uh, pronouns that do different things based on where they are in the sentence. So we have uh, what are called independent pronouns, possessive pronouns, and then subject and object pronouns that are part of the verb. And we'll go through each of those individually. So this, a lot of this information is taken from the beginning Clinket workbook, um, along with the beginning Clinket text that Dick and Nora put together. So they 
this information is out there, but then this presentation will be posted as well. So you can come back and look at it. So when do you use an independent pronoun? Um, independent pronouns we hear typically when we're introducing ourselves. So we hear that khat, that high tone khat, and they consist of khat, 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 so that's me. Wae. 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 That is he, she, or singular they. Those are, so you, you will see them, sorry, using the chat. Anyways, uh, so you will see sometimes uh, this 1s, 2s, 3s, and some of the other resources. That's just telling you it's a first person singular pronoun. Um, then we also have ways to talk about multiple people or plurals. So, Wuhan. 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 And then something you probably hear a lot at the beginning of class, Yuhan. That's you all or y'all. And then hus. them or plural they. When would you use these? So this, these particular pronouns are used less often than the other pronouns we'll talk about, but I'll show you some examples of when you would use independent pronouns. So independent meaning they can be off on their own. They're not attached to a verb and they're not attached to a noun necessarily in the same way that possessive pronoun. Is. So we'll look at that here in a minute. But when do you use these? So yadu khat. Yadu khat. Uh, question about this pronunciation of the single U. Because I thought it was O uh, like push, but I hear O like the double O. Does it matter? The sing so what eh? No, the H. Huh? Oh, and, huh. Huh, huh, and what I hear is huh, yuhan, which are different vowels. Is it huh and uh, or is it ooh? Does it change? So it's so when you see just the u, that's uh, huh. If you huh, see and uhan and uhan. Uhan, Uhan, yeah. So that is a distinction in the orthography where typically if you have a U, it sounds a little bit more like a double O in the beginning. Um, that's what I mean. Okay, because yeah. that's what I hear you saying. Cool. Yeah. Uh, Shagao Ish, is that a dialect thing as well or plake? Um, yeah, there's... <clears throat> so, well, there, there's a couple of things. So for this Wuhan word, um, there are some speakers that actually say Wuhan for this mm. word, for mm -hmm. us. Um, and there's also, um, when it comes to vowels, that's the exact pronunciation is one of the things that varies most from dialect to dialect. Um, uh. For example, being from Yakutat, I pronounce things like the word where you might hear um, someone like Austin Hammond say dis, dis for moon. I'd right. say dis, dis. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and it's just a shortened e, e. Um, yeah. 
Okay. So, so vowels are definitely, yeah, um, flexible. More flexible. Uh, yeah, and they, they also, I don't want to say they don't matter as much, but um, they exactly how they come out is not as important as how you pronounce your consonants because um, I'm getting a little sidetracked here, but like, um, especially when it comes to rounded schwas, like this, oh, this combination of sounds, a uh, plus ooh, Mm -hmm. um, this could be pronounced oo, o, o, um, or, uh, yeah, anyway, that's, okay, that's vowels. but it's understandable, at least, I mean, it's all understandable, I, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm just looking not um, to say the difference between, like, bitch and beach in English, I don't want to scribble a little bit, expensive, so, <laughs> understandable is good, yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's not cool. as, it's not as sensitive as English in that way. Awesome. Sheesh. Sheesh. Sitka, Sitka oh. Huna, and Nangun tend to have um, longer mm. beginning and ending vowels. Oh yeah, a sheesh. So anybody from those places, say it how they say it in those places. Uh, However you uh, learn it in the place that you're from, that's how you pronounce it. And then if somebody corrects you, you pronounce it that way with that person, and then you pronounce it the way you learned it. Yeah, so my uh, instructors were One, who's from uh, Skagway originally, and then Ketchikan, and um, lived in Ketchikan a little bit, and then is here in Juneau, and then Koneo uh, Timar Sarhach, who's from Klukwan. Um, So you'll hear how they say things kind of how I see things. And then I've done a lot of work in the interior, so there might be some ma, ma happening as well. <laughs> okay. Back to this. So when you'd use an independent, yadu chut, I am here, wa ekla'a, and you, so wa ekla'a. Wa ekla'a. Wa so and you so so when someone asks you wasa yeti and you uh where are they singular they or it or he or she uh yadu uhan yadu uhan yadu uhan yadu uhan yadu uhan Yadu Uhan. Yadu Uhan. We are here. Gusu Yuhan. Gusu Yuhan. Gusu Yuhan. Gusu Yuhan. Gusu Yuhan. Where are you all? And then you do husks. You do hus. 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 There, plural they are. So that's one type of pronoun. We also have what is called possessive pronouns. So this is my, your, ours, theirs. And you'll see this uh, with body parts. So anytime you talk about body part, it has to be possessed by somebody, somebody's body part. Um, same with kinship terms. So if you're talking about your mother or your sister or your in-laws, that has to be connected to somebody somehow. And so this is where you'll see these types of pronouns. So this first one here, that's why there's this P. So if you see in other resources, this sort of code, it'll be first person, 
sing singular, so just one, and then plural. This is what that P is telling me, or possessive, I'm sorry, possessive. Uh, so this first one here, ugh. So my, so ach tla, my mum, ach, ach douchey, my cat. <laughs> That's my. Uh, the second one here is again variable in whether or not it's it. Or e. So again, one of those, um, I hear it, it pronounced both ways. Sometimes I hear it more e than if, just depending on where you're from, and then also sort of what's going on around it. Um, it might get shortened, but both are your, and then duh. Is his or hers or singular theirs? Because there's no gendered pronouns in Tlingit. Then there's the plural version. So ha. 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 Uh, ha, uh, ha, uh, ha. Uh, ours, ye, 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 ye. So you alls or y'alls, and then hustu, 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 hustu. Has to do. Has examples of when you'll see those. So, ach to yak a. 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 And so this is talked about a little bit different depending on what resource you're using. So my to inside my to inside my myself is yak a is good. So that's why you see this ugh here. You're actually saying my something is good, not just I'm I'm good. Uh dasa ichiwu. 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 And this is similar, you'll see this, like, what do you have, um, which makes it sound like this isn't a possessive pronoun, but it is, you're actually asking what is in your, what, what's in your G, what's your G, <laughs> what's in your possession. Uh, same with this, uh, this one, so dasa du jiwu. Dasa du Dasa du jiwu. So dasa, what do chivu is in his or her possession? What do singular they have? Uh yai hit aya ha Or should I say pie? Yai hit aya. So our clan house, our nakahidi, 
Yai hit aya is the whale house. Ganachte di dakanuch city. I'll go slower. Ganachte di. Ganachte di. Ganachte di. Ganachte di. Ganachte di. He is the outer shell is Ganachtedi. So that you all there, and then Hichi hit aya. Hichi hit aya. Hichi hit aya. Hichi hit aya. Has to knock a hitty. Has to knock a hitty. So Hastu there, Nakahidi, uh, clan house is the frog house. Their clan is the frog house. Okay. So we've done independent pronouns, I, me, you. We've done possessive pronouns, my, yours, ours. Uh, I thought you were my yeah. Are the independent pronouns the ones you use when there is not a verb in the sentence? Typically, yeah. So this, if you uh, notice in these, they're, they're question sentences or they're just me here, like there's no verb. Um, same, you wouldn't, so possessive pronouns are connected typically to nouns of some type, like your house, your parents, your body parts. And then these, which we're just going to look at is when you'll see those pronouns in verbs. So those pronouns that get squished into the verb look like this based on whether they are the subject of the verb. So the one that's doing the verb or their object of the verb, the one that the verb is being done to. So there's two different types within that type of pronoun. Sheesh. <laughs> A. Yeah, and goodness to cheese. So Shagao uh, Ish posted something in the chat about dialect variation. If you're interested looking at the different ways communities might pronounce some of these things. Um, yeah, and, and variation can happen even within communities based on, we're finding like a lot of times it's based on people's families, who their families were, where they sort of, who they interacted with, which makes sense, right? Like you will speak more and more like the people that you're around and that's true. I, all languages that we talk, uh, where we speak and so um, take these sort of as generalizations and then Tlingit is full of exceptions. Okay, so these are those little bits that we see squished into the um, into these verbs, and we'll go through each of these um, quickly because uh, we'll talk more about them in examples itself. Uh, so the first person object, so it's the first person me that the verb is doing, so I'm the object in this particular one is chut. 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 And you'll see this in front of the verb. It'll look like it's on its own, but it is still part of that verb, so it's still if you were to take the verb out, you would still have to take that with it. 
If it's the subject, so I'm the one doing the verb, it's ch. 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 And we see the dash here, which lets you know that it, it won't be off on its own in the sentence. It has to be it has to be attached to something like this literally attached as like as we're reading it um, or as we're saying and we're saying it um, all together. Nice part about the second is that both subject and object singular so you are the same. The difference is um, if it's an object you might see it long. So if 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 and if it is the subject, so you are doing the verb, it's <laughs> and it'll be again squished into that verb. It'll be closer to the root than to the outside part of it. And then for a third person, we talked about this yesterday, if it's singular they, he, she, it, either doing the verb or having the verb done to them, it'll be nothing. You won't see anything there unless the subject, so the doer and the being done to are both third person. Then you'll see an uh, which is uh. letting you know that the, both of these are third person pronouns. So it's both they are doing it to, to they. <laughs> um, and you'll see this up there. Any questions so far? This is a little bit, we've sort of pulled the pronouns out. So we'll look at examples. It'll, if you're <laughs> confused, we'll look at ways these things actually sit in sentences because that's, that's the best way to, to learn some of these things, but I wanted to go through them sort of individually first. Okay. That's for the singular pronouns and then for the plural again, um, we, us, they, plural they, um, anytime you have more than one is first person plural is the object. So it's the one that's being done to, the, the verb is doing something to them. It's ha. 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 If they're the one doing the verb, it's t. 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 Second person plural. If they are having the verb done to them, it's ye, 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 ye. If they are doing the verb, it's ye, 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 ye. And if it's a third person plural, it will do some interesting things. So we won't talk about that as a group. <laughs> Go ahead and stop there. Um, based on combinations of, of things, it'll look a little bit different depending. And then this uh will pop up again if both of them are third person. Okay. Looking at this little chart again, hopefully this is a little bit less scary for the newer folks and the Elden folks have probably seen this a number of times, but this is sort of the basic structure. So if we're thinking about a clinket verb, there's the verb, there's the stuff in front of it, and there's some stuff behind it. Um, and then if we look at the verb itself, there's the stuff in front of it, the stem, that's where the meaning is coming from. It's the difference between you're running or you're walking or you're driving, that's in here in the stem. And sometimes there's stuff behind it and then we just sort of go down deeper. So the subject and the object pronouns are here in the 
prefix section of that verb. So in the front of the stem, they'll always be in front of the stem. The object is typically, if it, the object of the verb is typically the farthest out and the subject is squished right up, up against the classifier. So it'll be subject, classifier, verb group. And then there's some stuff here which we won't talk about. And some stuff that we're talking about right now. Okay, so some basic rules. Again, generalization. The object pronoun will be toward the front. It will often look like it's a separate word, but not always. Sometimes it'll be squished up to the verb as well. The subject pronoun or the one that's verbing will be really close to the root right before the classifier. Sometimes it'll look like it's right against the root because that classifier is zero or there's nothing there, but typically um, it'll be right there next to the classifier. It'll always be part of the verb, except if the third plural if it's using the plural has form, which we did talk about. So one example, at achdeshi iwonechi. At. 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 so at if we were to unweave these this phrase, this whole sentence, it's at a so a uh, it this locative which we don't really talk about, it's just it and then them. So we it's that double uh pronoun to get this uh um kh, which got squished here so we drop the a which will happen anytime we're in a verb the vowels will drop the consonants won't mostly um singular first person pronoun kh. this w is perfective we have the classifier the root and then the second singular object, i, and then there's um, the class words, yeah, all the, anyways. I hope you get well soon. If all you take away from this is there's pronouns and they look like this, kunachia a. For folks who've been doing this for a while, this should look hopefully fairly familiar. For folks that are just starting to look at this, again, don't worry, we'll figure it out. Any questions about that pronouns how to find them the different types of them okay i think it will make sense once you know once you start seeing it you know repetition uh, repetition repetition exactly. It will, um, it'll start to make sense. Uh, exactly. That pattern will start becoming just more and more familiar. You'll start to be able to pick these things out really quickly. So don't stress if you're not there yet. Start getting there. If you've been studying for a while and then for folks who've been studying uh, quite a long time, hopefully this is entertaining. I don't know. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to go ahead and take our break now. We'll go ahead and take a break for 10 minutes, come back at, come back at like 6.45, we'll do 13 minutes, um, and then we'll do some breakout room stuff. Again. Uh, uh, uh. 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 OK. 
A Yuhan. A Yuhan A. Okay, so for the next little bit, we'll go through a couple of different things. And then you folks can choose what room you would feel most comfortable in with a couple of caveats. So let me share my screen really quick. Okay, so we're all going to be looking kind of at pronouns, but doing different things. So the absolute beginner folks are going to stay here in the main room with Chut. We're going to go through resources. So if you've been studying Tlingit for kind of any length of time, it's going to be pretty boring for you. <laughs> um, so please go be in another room. We'll talk about how to find resources and then we'll start looking at pronouns a little bit. For the folks that have been studying for maybe a year or so, maybe a little bit more, um, sort of in that not quite ready to be in Tlingit, not quite ready to jump in to looking at a story in Tlingit. Um, I would like you folks to go through this and I will show you what this is. As a group. So this is a chance to look at some more pronouns in sentences. So first, as a group, I would like you folks to go through and highlight the pronouns in each of these eight sentences. And then having highlighted those pronouns, take those pronouns and enter in a different pronoun in this sentence and then provide the translation for that. So that is the sort of been studying for a little bit, just getting kind of getting ready to advance folks for the folks that have been studying for a while and or folks who think that sounds really interesting i would like to either be in that group um see what's going on or just because you want to jump into it um i would like folks to go through this story i'm only providing the plinket for now Maybe some of you have seen this, maybe not. I'm not sure which story Une has worked in his classes before, but this is one of the stories out of uh, uh, And there are 16 pages. It's not too much text. Probably not going to finish it all tonight. That's totally fine, but I'd like you to go through the story, provide your best guess at translations. Um, use those question marks if you're not quite sure um, what's going on. Translate as much as you can as a group. So that's the, the grizzled folks. And for folks that are, I just want to talk to somebody in Tlingit. I'm ready to have a conversation, just want some immersion time. I'll open up a room for that as well. Um, for folks that don't want to translate a story, but do want to talk in Tlingit. And that should be just Tlingit. Uh, no no English. <laughs> folks kind of know where they'd like to be. If you have any questions, come back. I do encourage the folks that are doing the story translation um, to try and stay in Tlingit if at all possible. If you're you know, really keen on socializing and checking in with folks, I know we haven't seen each other in a long time. It can be really nice to connect and chat in English. I can open up another room for that if you'd like to take a break and have a conversation and then come back. Um, but would like for folks to sort of focus on Tlingit because that's what we're here for. Any questions before I sort of open up the rooms and you folks disperse into the Zoom? Yeah, the one question, once you're in a room, you have to stay in that room, right? 
you don't have to. So if you get into a room and you're like, I don't know what's happening. You want to come back. You want to go to another room. That's totally fine. If you get in a room, you're like, this is really easy. I want to go to the other room. That's totally fine as well. Um, yeah. All I ask is that if you're like, I want to talk to this person and I want to talk to them in English, to go to, <laughs> to the English room to connect. Um, yeah. Any um, questions? Uh, uh, to a link for the story. Uh, yeah, so I will I will post both of the files in, uh, in here. So if you folks, even if you aren't doing the story, you can have that. Um, same with the, the other one as well. Uh, and I will also turn on the share screen option. So folks, if they want to share their screen, that's right, yeah. Okay. How long are we uh, breaking out for you, Don? Let's go ahead and say for a half an hour, I'll go ahead and check with folks. Um, again, raise your hand if you're done uh, or if you need help and I'll try and pop in there as well. So let's say 7.30, we'll come back and sort of wrap it up together as a class. Okay, so the room should be open. Let me know if you want to go to one and you haven't seen the link. If folks uh, who've been teaching Tlingit are really comfortable with Tlingit would help me out in some of these rooms, that would also be Kunachite. If folks have- Ida, uh, I can't download the story because it's open in, in meeting in Zoom. Oh, is everybody having that? I can try posting it again. Also, Ida, yeah, I'm also having a hard time joining a, a I can see the room, but I can't join it. Um, so it's the pronoun worksheet. Sure. Thank you. Yeah. How do I find a room to join? You should have at the bottom like a notice saying, hey, these rooms are open. If not, I can just send you to one. I don't have that. Uh, which oh, breakout rooms, yes. Uh -huh. I don't, okay, I see them. Thank you, Gunnar Trish. Uh -huh. You said the, uh, the the pronoun worksheet is for the absolute beginners, correct? That the pronoun worksheet is for your comfortable looking at pronouns. Absolute beginners will stay with me. So if you're a beginner, stay in this room. Oh, okay, okay. I don't have breakout rooms. Uh, where would you like to go? The one where they're doing the story. Okay. Hatsu. I'm deliberating. <laughs> the tough questions. Ida, uh, can I go to the story, uh, story room, Genesis?
Okay, is everybody that's here want to be here? Ah. <laughs> uh. Okay, okay. Let me let me check on this room. I'll be right back. Just one second. <laughs> Uh, actually, Shagao Ish, can you go to the pronoun room and ask them if there are any beginners there that want to come to the beginning session? Um, and if not, it's totally fine. Okay. Cool. So we're going to look at resources, where to find them, how to get to them, how to use them, and then we'll do some pronoun stuff. Hopefully, if you've already seen this, go to the pronoun room. Um, but if not, hopefully this is helpful to you folks. I know we've had a question, what do I need to study? So that's what we'll do right now, assuming everything else is going well in the other places. Okay, so sort of the first, foremost, hopefully this, we've talked about this before, is the Beginning Tlingit Workbook. So this book is based off of this book, which looks like it's blue now, I think. This is an older version of Beginning Tlingit. Both are available on the TlingitLanguage.com website, which I will post the link to just in case. So both are available in PDF version. If you can't find them, maybe can't afford them, just want to look at them PDF first, you use an e-reader, totally up to you. So that's on TlingitLanguage.com. That is sort of the beginning. If you're taking any beginning Tlingit course, that's what you'll likely be using. Um, starts with questions, phrases, these sorts of things. If and when you're like, awesome, I've gone through that, or I would like to look at some more uh, in-depth stuff, like I'm a real keener for these verb things. This is what we use for the intermediate Tlingit. So Tlingit, uh, how sene chayu chatangi, our language saved us. Um, when I put this book together, this is a Gold Belt Heritage Foundation book. Um, so this workbook can be found at SHI, so Sea Alaska Heritage uh, Institute. You can buy that either online or in the store if you happen to be in Juneau. Beginning Tlingit, you can buy if you're in Juneau or in Southeast at a bunch of bookstores, also at SHI. This you have to either order off of Amazon, I think. Um, yeah, I think you can only get this on Amazon or it is also on TlingitLanguage.com. Edith, can you hold that a little closer so I can write it down? Yeah. I Sorry, I'm so blind. <laughs> awesome. I totally get it. Uh, yeah, and there's a couple of different editions of this um, floating around. So if you find this at a used bookstore, um, most of the information is the same, but. Thank you. Uh, and then just something that would be useful to have is sneaky sound. So if you're interested and or need sound to practice, this goes through a bunch of different um, See, like word combinations. So you can go and there's audio for this as well. Listen to the difference between the underlined K and the not underlined K or the pinched X and the not pinched X, this sort of thing. Um, See, Alaska Heritage has this. This is not digitized yet, and I'm hoping to fix that. Um, and then also everything I think here, you can also order off of Amazon if um, that's where you get your books. Those are the textbooks. Um, I'll show you also. So TlingitLanguage.com has all of these things, but. Are you gonna be doing these classes um, online on Zoom? I'm in Anchorage, so. Um, yeah. yeah. So um, all of our Clinket language classes that we host through Southeast have a distance component. So they're high oh, classes. So if you're in Juneau, you can come and take them in person. 
but you can also sign up for distance and take them sort of wherever you're at. Um, Thank you. Fall classes start August something. I can find the, the exact date um, towards the end of August, if you're interested. Okay. Next, so that's textbooks. Next, we'll look at dictionary stuff. Well, let's start with something else. We'll start with, so this is twingitlanguage.com. This is where you'll go to find the dictionary that I suggest folks start with because it has a lot of combined information from other dictionaries is the one online. There is no print version of it. This is what, so one has been working on combining everything and adding stuff that he's um, elicited from folks. This was updated in January. Go to this link, uh, click the link, and then you can download it. You might have to come back and re-download the newer versions, um, or you can just look at it here, click at dictionary. Um, if you don't download it, you can hit, if you're on a Mac, Command F, and then it'll pop up this little search bar. You can type in a word like, you can type it in English, like newspaper, and it'll highlight each of those results. You can go through them that way. Um, if you've downloaded it on whatever PDF reader you're using, on the left hand side should be a table of contents. There's an English to Tlingit and a Tlingit to English. If you're looking at the English to Tlingit, I would recommend you find what it is in Tlingit and then go back to the Tlingit version because you'll get a lot more information than you will from just the English to Tlingit. It's pretty, if we go down, looks like this. Um, maybe if it loads, yeah, it's, this is the English to Tlingit. It's pretty sparse as far as uh, info goes. So there's that. There are verbs in this dictionary as well, but if you're looking at verbs and how to conjugate them, there are some conjugations here, but I would suggest going to this site, which is Carrie Eggleston's verb paradigm site, hosted at UAF right now, or the Alaska Native Language Center, was originally hosted at Gold Belt, might be hosted there again, doesn't matter. Uh, We've looked at this a little bit. I think I may walk through this a little bit, but just to review, all of these are verb roots. Again, if you're looking for something in English, you can go Command F on a Mac or Control F, I think on a PC, it'll pop up this search bar. You can type in, yeah, uh, talk, and then it'll highlight two results. There's talk, there's talk. Click on the bl blue root and it'll pop up all these different types of talking based on what the English is telling you. Like, okay, I want to talk about how I want to say explain it. Click on that yellow link, it'll pop down all of the different iterations of how to say that. These are not complete, obviously, like you can say them in second person, but that's not, uh, you know, we just didn't fill that out. So, um, if you find that you want to say something and you're not sure how to change the pronoun, this little formula here will help you. Um, but if you're just starting out, don't worry if this makes no sense. <laughs> it will come in time for sure. Any questions about any of this stuff so far? Okay, so there is that. Um, other dictionaries that you can look at include uh, this one, which Rene has talked about, called the yellow <laughs> verb dictionary, it's bright yellow. This isn't in print anymore. Uh, so again, this is also digitized, clinkitlanguage.com, but if you find one, hold on to it. If you have multiple and would like to donate them, uh, I'm collecting them and giving them out to students in person who don't have one, can't find one. So that's that. That's the Nation Story Dictionary. Its layout's a little bit different, like the codes that they use are a little bit different. Um, so it does take a little bit of getting used to. It also has an English to Tlingit, Tlingit to English side. Um, and they, 
you know, come from a missionary background. So there's some things that are in here that we'd want to talk about. There's that. There is the Tlingit noun dictionary or dictionary of Tlingit. There's a couple of verbs in here, not very many. This is Carrie Eggleston's book. This is Sea Alaska. You can buy this from the Sea Alaska Heritage Institute website. You can buy it from most bookstores. You can buy it off Amazon. This is still in print, I'm pretty sure. Most of what's in here, I want to say maybe all of what's in here is also on the, is in the dictionary that's online. So um, the dictionary is compiled, but you might find some you know, other information or if you like print books, this is great. There's also an interior noun dictionary. I don't have a physical copy. That's also on TlingitLanguage.com. So if you're learning Tlingit in the interior, that has dial the dialect representation and it also has nouns um, that we that aren't in the noun dictionary for the coast. So this is like the coastal dictionary and then there's an interior dictionary as well. Um, that's written in an older orthography. So it takes a little bit of getting used to if you haven't looked at it, um, but also a really good resource. Those are dictionaries. Other reference books, um, maybe for the more, if you're really getting into verbs. So when I showed this yesterday, maybe, Plinket reference guide, it goes through the top 50 verbs, the most common verbs, and it breaks them down based on pronoun and based on mode or tense. Um, and so you can go through here, be like, I want to talk about um, saying things a certain way, and I want to talk about it in the future form, third person, and you go and you find that there. It's in print, also on flinkitlanguage.com. Find it. This you can also only get on Amazon. So this is printed from Amazon actually. So if you want a hard copy, that's an Amazon buy. And then if you're really into place names, particularly, I think this might be only for the coastal folks. Pashlithkuhas um, Ani uh, our grandparents' names on the land. Um, Tom Thornton helped put this together. Um, has maps, place names for each of the different quans. So if, again, I think this is only postal stuff. Um, this is a Sea Alaska book, so you can buy it from Sea Alaska Bookstore or Amazon. Yeah. Oh, name of that one again, I'm sorry. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, this has been digitized. Um, I'm not sure if it's up on flinkitlanguage.com anymore. There was a little bit of tension there. So if you need it, you need it in digital form, email me and I will email it to you for educational purposes only. Um, otherwise, yeah. And that's that. Ooh. Phrase book, a bunch of like survival phrases in here, how to talk about coming and going, body parts, being sick. This is good if you're really you know interested in I want to speak Tlingit in all these different situations and I need to memorize these phrases if that's where you're at this is a good resource also digitized um I think this is also see Alaska and then Amazon as well There's so when you say see Alaska the the downtown shop yes so the so they may have it in the shop itself so if you're in Juneau and want to go downtown they do have it some things there um, or you might have to special order it if it's not in if they don't have a and, and that would be at the Sobolov yeah so their new their new seed it's been up for a number of years but the newer Sea Alaska building Sobolov Center yep. that shop Sobolov Center great thank yeah. you uh -huh. okay that's 
dictionaries, reference, textbooks, phrase books, now story stuff. So the story that the, the advanced folks are, um, <laughs> are working on comes out of this book that Renee put together. This is actually um, relatively new. This comes off of Amazon, only printed on Amazon, also digitized, obviously. Um, this is meant to be children stories. There's actually like a lot of complex stuff in here um, because when I asked the elders to say it, how you would say it, you know, to, to anybody. And so it's illustrated, it's really pretty, um, really good stuff. This comes from um, a couple of inland speakers. So there's some inland stuff in here um, that if you're learning Tlingit on the coast, you might not be familiar with, but um, yeah, Marge Dudson, Coastal, George Davis, uh, Sam Johnson's uh, interior, Norman James is interior. Yeah, so a collaborative effort. Okay. The Dauenhauer stuff. So click it oratory if you're interested in speeches, a uh, collection of speeches given at different events um, by speakers that we don't have anymore uh, that aren't with us, um, many of them. So super great resource. Also digitized, I believe. Also see Alaska, can find it at most bookstores in Juneau. So Herkside carries them typically both downtown and in the Valley um, and Amazon. Oral narrative, so Twinket Stories. Also, uh, Dick and Nora put this together. Also see Alaska, also found at bookstores around Juneau and Southeast. And Amazon looks at different uh, oral narratives um, about all kinds of stuff. It's kind of broken up into sections. Um, the more like contemporary stories about like the Russians coming, that's sort of towards the back. Um, and the introductions are also really good, just about like Tlingit Tunditani, ways of thinking about things in Tlingit um, and the elders they worked with. So there's that. The last Dauenhauer book is this one, Russians in Tlingit America, a direct response to Tlingits in Russian America by another author looks at the battles of Sitka, looks at them in Tlingit. So this is a really good resource if you're into history and also into Tlingit language. Um, and it talks a lot about the sort of leading up to and aftermath of that particular, those particular events. Also see Alaska, also at the bookstores typically um, in Juneau, also on Amazon. Maybe digitized? I'm not sure, I don't remember. I think so. Um, and finally, this is not exhaustive by any means, but this is sort of what I would start with. <laughs> um, if you're looking to complete your Tlingit language learning collection, um, this is uh, uh, Taka River Tlingit Clan. So this is um, Elizabeth Nyman's life history for the most part. Um, talks about her growing up along the Taku, going back and forth between the interior and the coast. This is written in the old orthography, Jeff Lear's orthography. So it can be a little bit, um, if you're coming from coastal orthography, a little bit hard to follow, but really good stuff in here. Um, recommend if you're interested at all in the Taku area. Elizabeth Diamond's freaking amazing. Um, a lot of, but also like a lot of high level stuff. So if you're just starting, don't feel bad. <laughs> um, if there's a lot of stuff that um, you can't follow just yet. That is resources. They come in book form, they come in digitized form. Any questions about those, where to get them? Thoughts? 
if you are just thinking, I'm going to start taking beginning Plinket, Plinket workbook, and you'll be fine, <laughs> basically. Um, Plinket workbook, maybe a dictionary. I use the one that's online for the most part, but if you wanted to use the, any of the other print ones. That's it. That's resources. Uh, okay. So with that, how are you folks doing? As pretty, pretty newbies, how are you feeling? Thoughts, questions um, that we can check in about in just our small group? I'm just um, amazed at the way you guys teach compared to how I've been taught in Anchorage. And so I really wanna, I really wanna take your classes. Um, I love Shaksani Keats' um, way of teaching because she can't see and she, it's so personal with her. And we get a lot of the history and the stories because she, you know, grew up only speaking Plinket. So it's, um, but your way of teaching, I think I will learn more um, because you're both, you're doing inland too. And I'm mm -hmm. actually, I'm actually from Mayo. So I'm from the yeah. Yukon. So yeah. Nice. Yeah. There's all different kinds of teaching styles. Some vibe more with others and that's totally fine. If you take a class and you're like, I don't, I don't know how I can't follow you. Go take it for somebody else. Like I'm not, <laughs> I'm not heard about it at all. So yeah, if you would like to let me know, I'm happy to help get folks registered um, or just send information if there's somebody that you think might be interested. And I think all hers are called, called elementary, Clinket elementary. Yeah, I, I think, too. I think part of that is UAA doesn't have intermediate or advanced on the yeah. books. Um, I don't, yeah, maybe makes sense. I don't know. The UA system is a mess. So, so I'm yeah. not sure um, what the solution to that is. But yeah, every, all of our language classes are hybrid classes. So anybody can take them. And then I see so a lot of spelling variations, like a lot. So is that, is that just different dialects? Um, to a certain extent, some of them are just how folks were taught. So there we, the coastal orthography, that orthography you're seeing here was kind of mm -hmm. the, the first the first one that was one that was talked about and accepted by elders in Ketchikan. And then uh, there, well, Jeff Lear went to the interior, developed another one, and they've been using that for a while um, and now have transitioned back to the, coast, the coastal orthography. Um, largely just for ease of access, like we're making materials so we can share them more easily. Um, so there is, but there's still folks who, you know, learn the older orthography, uh, particularly folks in the interior. So you'll see things spelled a little bit differently if they're coming from the interior, if they learned that orthography. And then, um, I mean, some learning how to read in Plinket is itself a skill. So some folks are fluent speakers, but they just didn't learn how to write in Plinket and that, that's totally fine. And so they will, will write it how they say it. And um, I mean, like we were talking about before with uh, vowels and things like this, if you write it how you say it and you say it a different way than other people say it, then it's gonna be a little bit different, but <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, I think her internet failed. <laughs> Yeah. Oh no, yeah, it's gone. <laughs> um, I had a quick question about uh, the beginning class mm -hmm. that is going to be offered this fall. What's the structure of that usually? Like days of the week, times yeah. of day, generally? Uh, yeah, so I'm teaching the beginning class this fall. Well, that's so um, Robbie, so Kuth Yake, uh, Robbie Littlefield teaches in Sitka. I think she might be, I'm not sure if she's teaching a hybrid class or not, or she's going back to in just in person um, because of COVID. Anyways, um, so I'm teaching Monday and Wednesday, 5.30 to 7.30 um, Alaska time. And we would just do it 
for the folks who are online, we do it over Zoom, kind of similar to this, but and you know, we go through the textbook and we have a, an agenda and uh, right. teaching and the, the level. So it's it's a little bit easier, I think. It's like we know where everyone's at, which is beginning. Um, right, right. And so, and you still use Blackboard for yeah, so I I use Blackboard. Um, I record classes, but I don't post them. I don't post my classes, my beginning classes to YouTube, um, mostly because as beginners, I feel like people are just a little more comfortable if they're if they know that it's not going to be everybody's watching them. Right. Um, yes. So that's if that is a deterrent at all, I. You, you have the opportunity to go back and watch classes that you miss if you need to, but um, they won't be posted on YouTube unless everyone in the class is like, yeah, post it. Okay, fine. Um, but normally I don't for beginning. Yeah. Uh -huh. Any other questions? Thoughts? Oh yeah, okay, you're back. <laughs> I get cut off every single day. <laughs> Those internet struggles for sure. I think it's like a timeline. <laughs> Waiting for you to be in a call and they're like, nope. <laughs> okay. So let's look at some more. I've got a couple of minutes. Let's look at some pronoun-y stuff. Look at some beginner stuff make sure nobody is freaking out anywhere okay Misha's still in yeah. okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. so usually we will touch briefly on pronouns and then sort of come back to them way later in the semester so if you're just like, what are we even talking about? That's totally fine. Um, but I do want to look at them a little bit. I think it's this one. Yeah, okay. Okay, so in beginning to think at pronouns, the first time we start talking of pronouns is chapter two, which is das away eatine. What do you see? So we'll look at them individually. Um, probably go through this pretty fast and then look at the vocabulary for that chapter. Um, there's also a bunch of quizlets, which is just like flashcards. You can test yourself, play games and stuff for each of the chapters in Tlingit. And I'm happy to send the links out for folks who would like to get some practice before jumping in. But they're also posted. Um, if you're taking beginning Tlingit with me, I post them like as we go through chapters. So you can test yourself anyways. So how to say me. There are two different ways, like we talked about before, independent and object. Um, this is the chut part. So high tone chut. 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 Is that example of like, yadu chut, I'm here. You'll see that typically in sentences that don't have a verb. You'll see chut. This is the object pronoun. So if you are being verbed, you'll see chut. You, again, two different ways to say you, an independent way, which is what eh. So like you, like and you, 
or eh. 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 And this is object or subject pronoun, but squished into a verb. This is that third person singular he, she, or they. Singular they. So, huh. 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 This is again independent. You'll see this. And that person, or like, and her, and him, or what are they doing? Like, what are they doing? That person, singular person doing. Um, it'll look like nothing. This third person, if it's the subject, sometimes it'll look like a, if it's the object of a verb. My, ugh, 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 ugh. Your is it? Or e? 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 His or hers? The? 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 Now we get into some other stuff we haven't talked about yet, at least in this class, I don't think. How do we say and? So this is a pretty good one to know and pretty simple. So like an example sentence of this, like Ida ka Heather, you khatu sak. My name is Ida and Heather. Um, or I'm called both of these things. Now we look at some questions. This will make more sense because this is worked right from a chapter that we haven't looked at as class, but no worries. <laughs> We're just doing our best here. Okay. Uh dasa ichiwo. Dasa ichiwo. Dasa ichiwo. Dasa ichiwo. Dasa ichiwo. Dasa If we sort of unwrap this a little bit, we have dasa, which is what. So da is really the what part of that, and that sa. You'll see it in some resources as voice. Um, in others, it might be like the question marker. It does a lot of different things. But in this case, it's making this a what, basically. Um, the if is that your pronoun, and then ji wu. So ji, possession, and then that wu is at. So what do you have? What's in your possession that we looked at a little bit ago? Uh, Ege, shakao ish. Um, my guys want to go a little bit longer, so I'm here to request an extension. Uh, yeah, that, that would, yeah, that's all good. Um, can you check with the story folks to make sure they're doing okay? And let mm. them know that we'll go until, I don't know, longer than now. <laughs> longer, okay, yeah. Sheesh. Okay, so dasa ichiwo, what do you have to answer that? So if somebody asked you dasa ichiwo, it would be whatever you've got. Ach jiwo. Ach jiwo. Ach jiwo. Ach jiwo. Ach jiwo. Ach jiwo. So for example, kukida ach jiwo. I have a pen. Kasha hasha, ach, chiwu. Ah, kasha hasha, 
if you don't know what it is in Tlingit, but you still want to stay in Tlingit, you know, book achjiwu or kuk achjiwu. Any noun that we've got can go there. And then if we look at it sort of breaking down a little bit, ach is my g possession wu I have blank. And when we talked a little bit about sentence order, the most salient thing, the thing that people are asking about goes here in the front. So in English, I have this. In Tlingit, if they're asking what you have, they probably care more about you have the thing than you actually having it, like they know you have it. Uh, so you put that thing up at the front, right? And then this looks at different ways of pronouning. So we looked at um, Anyways, so we looked at dasa ijiwu. How do you ask what do I have? So you're maybe talking to a class, maybe sassing your kid, I don't know. Uh dasa achjiwu. What do I have? And then to respond to that same formula, blink, ijiwu. 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 Yep. A. So you have blank or blank your is in your possession. Now what do we we want to ask? What do they singular they have? Dasa duchiwu. 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 What does P, she, it, singular they have? We're sort of going, we're transitioning to singular they, but some of our sources still have P, she in them. And then the answer, same as before, blank, do ji wu, or do ji wu, do ji wu, do ji wu. So or book or paper thing do jiwu uh do jiwu well you would say that if some other person had it. They have a blank okay. If you want to ask what somebody has, or no, if you want to ask, do you have this? So this is a yes or no question. Like you're, you know, asking your kid, do you have the cup? Do you have your shoes? Do you, do you know what's happening? Anyways, uh, you see ge in the question instead. Um, so you could ask somebody, uh, ge ichiwu. Pen ichiwu. Kuhida get ichiwu. Ah, ke So this ge is the yes or no question. So sa is your questioning, and then you've got a question word before that to let you know is it what, how, when. If you see ge or ake or akwe. It's a yes or no question. Um, and again, that ge is gonna come right after the thing that you're most questioning about. So you're not questioning the possessiveness of it. You're asking about the thing. Is that thing what you have? Um, so ge, yes, no, i, you, g, possession, wu, at. Um, so located at your, at your possession. Do you have? 
And then the answer to that would be ah. Uh, ah. Uh, ah. Uh, ah. Uh, Kuhida Achjiwu. Kuhida Achjiwu. Ah. Kuhida Achjiwu. Ah. Kuhida Achjiwu. So ah uh, is yes. Hopefully <laughs> we know. We hear ah uh, a lot. Or plague. 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 So this is no. And then something, yeah. No. Kuhida achju. No, I don't. Um, it's not not which is different anyways so yes no i have blank so it's plake what you actually have blank. so if you don't have a pen you would say no i have this it's yeah so it's it's either yes i have the thing or no i have this other thing because if we were to negate not having anything at all this whole thing changes <laughs> Don't want to do about that too much. Okay. If we wanted to say no, I don't have that thing. It's this. Plake kuhida plus achji. Plake kuhida plus achji. Yes. Plake kuhida plus achji. A to look at that in depth. So plague, same no, the thing that they're asking about, not my possession. So it, we don't see that woo because it's not located there. We don't have it at all. Um, and then we have this not here. Not is also something that you'll hear pronounced differently. Uh, it could be clef. It could be hef. Uh, I pronounce it like hef. Um, it could be leif. Um, maybe hef. I don't want to put. There's a number of. Sometimes it's just l. Um, different ways of pronouncing not. In the book, we kind of just stay with plus, and then whatever community you're from, you'll pronounce it the way that 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 community does. A dusa dujiwu. A dusa dujiwu. A dusa dujiwu. A dusa dujiwu. So a dusa kuhida dujiwu. A dusa kuhida dujiwu. Okay, do we want to guess at what this is asking based on some of the things we've seen before? Do Where have is the pencil? So there's a pencil, uh, and there's a question, and there's having. A do sa is who. So a do, who, and then sa, that question. Who has blank? Literally, who question, pencil, singular they, possession. <laughs> that's that's how it, we would think about it uh, in, in Tlingit Tindatani. Who has whatever you're asking about. This is where you would respond with who has the thing and what thing that they have. And I... This is also where you can kind of get to decide who goes first based on are they asking about the person or are they asking about the thing. Um, in the book, there's a certain sort of standard way we do it, but it can kind of be both. And then blank out blank. That's what that is. <laughs> okay. Now we get into some verb, verb stuff. Uh, dasa iatin. 
Dasa yatin. 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 Okay. And as you're listening to speakers, as you're listening to recordings, you'll realize that they're not emphasizing things as strongly as I am, but we're learning. So it's better to go really high and go really low. And then you sort of find that middle ground as you become more and more confident in what you're talking about. Um, so it's less sing-songy. Also, because we're recording, I want people to know that I know how to say it. Anyways, <laughs> um, if we were to unweave this a little bit, um, da again, what sa is that voice? And then this verb here, this teen is the verb C. We have a zero here, the pronoun you. So we don't have an object. We're asking what, what do you see? There's no overt object here. That I is for you. This ya yeah is the classifier. Don't worry about that at all as a beginner. Just know that it's there. And then teen is C. What do you see? The answer would be whatever that thing is. Khatin. 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 I see blank or the thing. Uh, there's nothing here. I, so that kh classifier again, and then C. I see the thing. If you want to ask somebody, ge, so speak ge eatin. Speak ge eatin. Speak ge eatin. Do you see speak to respond to that? Same as before, it's ah, speak khatin or plake sha khatin. So ah, speak khatin. Ah, seek khatin. Khatin. Ah, seek khatin. Ah, seek khatin. Or plake sha khatin. Plake sha khatin. Plake sha khatin. Plake sha khatin. So yes, I see speak, I see the black bear, or no, I see a mountain, or I see whatever you're actually seeing. Any questions about that? Um, this is just an odd question that I saw the the classifier changed with the uh, ah, and I was just curious. I'm, I'm sure there's some complicated rules in terms of when the classifier gets morphed into the pronoun. Sorry, so if I'm opening up a can of worms, we can just stop. <laughs> uh, no, I mean, that's a good question. It also, um, yeah, the classifier changes based on a little bit based on who's doing it, um, but more based on the event, whether it's done or not, kind of. Um, there's a couple of different reasons, but yeah. Good pattern seeing the classifier does change a little bit there. Oh, uh -huh. Okay, and then there's some noun stuff that we would look at if we're looking at this chapter, but we sort of just beat bopping around so we'll go ahead and stop for now um 
yeah, so if you're interested, particularly in how to form more questions, I know Renee maybe did some question stuff, but if you do have the beginning Plinket workbook, there is on page 39 of the old book, might be a couple of pages different if you're looking at the one online, um, this chart here that goes through all the different, most of the different ways to ask questions and then sort of how you would go about doing that. Um, yeah. All right. I'll go ahead and bring back the rest of the crew. See how they're doing. Enough cheesh oh. for the breakout session. It was fun. Yeah. yeah. A. Finish cheesh. Uh -huh. Wait for the rest of the Yuhan to come back. Wasayati, the cut you on. How did it go? How are you doing? Yeah, okay. Hey. Ach, the Wasego. To Yak, eh? Yak, eh? Do um, maybe a couple of folks from each group want to share kind of how it went, things that they found, things maybe that they didn't know. Um, Maybe we'll start with the pronoun worksheet group. How did it go? Um, yeah. Oh, God, no. <laughs> uh, eh. Well, we did pretty good, but number three was a challenge for sure. Two year it uh, I'm really not sure what we came up with for that one. Yeah. Yeah, so for folks who weren't in the group, this is There would be a lot of work on just that side alone. <laughs> Hopefully, <laughs> what you're looking at here. Um, yeah, so this, so yeah, as soon as you start looking for pronouns in the verb, it gets much more tricky. Um, so don't worry if you're not there <laughs> yet, but. No, um, uh, again. Anything else from the, the pronoun crew? Yeah, I feel like we did pretty good with the rest of them. Okay. Everybody no, I... get through all of them pretty well. You know, like number three was this challenge, but everything else, was, it was pretty good. It was good teamwork. And is uh, there only one in each line or is there more than one? There could be more than one. Uh -huh. Is there more than one in one of these? Um. One and three, didn't we decide? <laughs> By we decide, I mean. Oh. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, because they have the object and the subject pronouns. One and three. Ida, uh, can we just walk through the answers on those? Like just the first few at least that we're kind of sure. talking about? Sure, yeah. Let me stop sharing and I will pull up a typeable version. Ah, that would have helped. Uh, 
<laughs> oh, Johnny, are you guys trying to type in the PDF? <laughs> of course we did. <laughs> we, we, we cheated and used the chat. Okay. Cash loss. Okay. Let me see. Can make this a little bit bigger. All right, Yuhan. So what did you get for this first one here? Yak e echsatini. E. E. Ha. Red and red. And which one? Ha. This. This. Uh. Is and that what it... What do we think? What about our more advanced folks here? No, sorry. <laughs> folks who've been learning for a while. So I thought it was interesting because I've done pronoun works, but um, like practicing. And I thought only I was, and then they were saying the X and it, it blew my mind just because of all the worksheets that I've done, I'm like, what? There's more than just the I. Because <laughs> I'm like, I, what a, you know, ah, uh, and to hear it, it just kind of blew my mind because I'm like, wait a second. Do I need to go back and rewire my brain? <laughs> Always some of those clinket moments where you realize, <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Maybe that is that way. Oh, in uh, Shika, they say to ye. That might also be how we say it here. I it could be a typo. I don't know. <laughs> so ye, kwasatin. So ye, kwasatin. So the e mm -hmm. is, is the um, object you. Uh, um, and I was, so we were looking at it and you in that form, wouldn't that be possessive? Uh, so yeah, uh, no. So this would be an object, an object pronoun. Um, so not a perverse pronoun. So this oh. is um, the person being seen. Yes, it would be the person that the subject is seeing. Okay. Any other thoughts on where? The Pronouns might be in this. This is a little bit challenging if you're just starting to look for pronouns. This one is the but it's because it changed from the Oh, yep. So this got squished uh, because this is a future form. So I will see you again. Uh, in hasn't happened yet. So we're looking at the future and this gets, so this whole part here is, uh, well, I can't, anyways, that whole part there is uh, the futury. And if you have that and uh, this, what we call or it'll squish sometimes. So you won't see that pronoun um, because there's already an underline consonant there. Um, so we could say maybe it's here, um, but it's sort of squished into this, this whole bit here. And then we've got ach, chut, ach, Ugh, ugh. We could argue that there, and technically there are pronouns in here, because these are also verbs. Um, but again, we don't see them, so it's all good there. And they're also acting. Anyways. 
Do we not see them because the third person's singular? Or something else weirder? Yeah, uh, for the most part. <laughs> yeah, luckily that's about as weird as it gets with pronouns anyway. Yeah. Okay. And then if you were able to play around with the pronouns, awesome. If not, maybe try it out on your own. We can come back and look at that. What about our story translating crew? How did that go? Are you done? You're finished, right? Like everything, everything's done. Like, <laughs> like, uh, day, uh, Nask. Maybe okay. we did three pages. <laughs> Anything interesting? Something you folks couldn't figure out? You'd like to talk about? I was very surprised that Iquasatini can change like so much that I was like, oh, there's a whole <laughs> study we for a month. Uh-huh. Uh, we we found this verb about spilling things, and and we found the story is a properly earthy clinket tale. I would I would be concerned about reading it to seven year olds no. because they might take the bathroom humor all the way. No. <laughs> Gotta go through it sometime. <laughs> yeah, so this particular story, as with most of the stories, there's there's a number of versions. Um, if you've looked at the Dauenhauer um, text, there's a couple of different stories about um, bears getting married um, with various levels of bodily function included in them, depending on who's, who's telling it. Um, but yeah, yeah. A Okay, I'll plan to chief the cut you home. Thank you folks so much. Thanks for all of the work you've been doing. Hopefully you folks had fun. Um, learn some new things. We'll gather again tomorrow. We'll look more at some story stuff and then we'll do some feedback stuff. So Friday is our sort of check-in story. Try to be in Plinket as much as possible day. Um, we'll probably do a little bit of breakout stuff as well. So if there's something that you've been working on in your group, either the pronoun sheet or the story, and you'd like to do that again, we can do that. It's totally up to you folks. Just let me know. Otherwise, we'll look at some more um, uh, Plinket stories told by different folks, um, just to train our ear, listening to folks that speak a little bit differently. All righty then. If nobody has any other questions, I will see you folks. They're So yay, Quasitine. Good night, cheese. 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 Good night,